Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Comic Source. I'm your host, Jace, returning with Spawn Daily. I can't believe it's been this long. Two weeks, I think I missed. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, just a horrible sort of storm of events. Uh, I think I mentioned my car blew up, uh, as you guys know, and I got a new one, and there was problems. I had to take it back multiple times to the dealership. Uh, then my wife got sick. Then my video card died on me. So uh, I know they're all excuses. I should have had a bunch of... Um, episodes banked so if something like this happened um you know i wouldn't miss especially not this long again so that's what i'm attempting to do now attempting to get a bunch banked i'll probably release one a day while i'm building up that surplus and then hopefully uh, i'll start releasing more than one a day um maybe just for a little while to, to at least try to get caught up to where i would have been uh, i mean we already know this is going to take over a year uh, to get caught up because in the meantime while I'm going back and reading these older Spawn issues, the new Spawn stuff is is coming out and being very well received, right? Sam and Twitch case files, Rat City, uh, the Erica Schultz penned series about a, a Spawn in the future. That sold out. Issue one sold out. It was very well received critically, and, and also fans really seem to enjoy it. So that's going to a second printing. So there's a lot of really great Spawn stuff going on right now, and it's just making me even more anxious to get caught up. I mean, I, I've read, I'm almost up to issue 100 right now, while also reading the uh, the ancillary stuff as well. So just a reminder, uh, this daily Spawn reading order does use a reading order put together by a gentleman named Blake Whitlow. If you've been watching all the Spawn dailies up to this point, you've seen his face. He was able to join me for a few of them, unfortunately. I'm flying solo right now. I would love for Blake to be able to come back on, and he would love to come back on, and just life doesn't allow that right now, but maybe sometime in the future. But anyway, that's the reading order we're using. Uh, whenever it's uh, an episode focused on an issue of the regular series, it will be one issue per episode. But when we get to the tie-in stuff, whether it be Curse of Spawn or Sam and Twitch or you know, miniseries like Angel or the Violator, We'll likely be covering multiples just because we don't want this to take forever. We do want to get caught up. So with all that being said, uh, last issue, issue 73, we saw the Heap make his appearance. Really interesting character, uh, and that's where this issue uh, picks up. So let me go ahead and uh, dive into the book here. As you can see from the uh, credits page written by, or I should say story, by Todd McFarlane and Brian Holguin, it's not clear who's actually doing the, the scripting, which is interesting because we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the scripting, some of the language that's used uh, as we cover this. Capullo's handling the pencils, Danny Mickey on inks. We've got uh, lettering and copy editing by Tom Orzakowski and colors by Brian Haberlin and Dan Kemp. Uh, I also want to point out that they're still doing the little spawn summary, if you will. Um, so it talks about what happened uh, last issue. We won't go over it since you guys probably just watched 73. Well, it's been a few weeks now, probably. Uh, but anyway, you can go back and, and look at 73 if you want to jog your memory about what's going on. So some some humor here as we start. We see Sam and Twitch in their office, and Sam's making some offhand comment about you know, un this guy looks unbelievable, steroid-free. And meanwhile, uh, Twitch is looking at the file on Al Simmons that Cogliostro left behind. He's like, well, you think Al Simmons was on steroids? You know, that might ex explain his tremendous strength. But, and uh, uh, Sam's like, no, 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 Twitch, you don't understand. Like, this is all about carb loading and vascular development and all these advanced nu uh, nutrition system. And he shows him this, uh, this centerfold of this guy who... Clearly, there's no way this guy could naturally look the way he looks uh, without taking some kind of steroids or growth hormone or something. There's just no way, right? And you can tell by the look on Twitch's face. I love uh, what Capullo does here. Just zoomed in on the eyes, but the skepticism is real, right, with the eyelids half uh, half down. And, um, of course, Sam's, you know, fantasizing. That's going to be me in a couple months. Just you watch. We know that's not the case. Twitch knows that's not the case. I think deep down, Sam knows it's, that's not the case. But it does uh, make for a little bit of a lighthearted entry into um, into the issue here. So Twitch is like, uh, you know, that's all comp very compelling, but let's talk about Al Simmons. You know, he's like, I I've been doing all this research. Uh, the guy is a national hero. He took a bullet for the president. Then he joined Black Ops. He was in the places where there's a lot of 
unrest, if you will. You know, he again, this is a 90s, so he's mentioning Angola, Nicaragua, Cambodia, uh, and he talks about him marrying Wanda, but he still, quote unquote, travels a lot. And he, his best friend was named Terry. Does that ring a bell? And Sam's like, Terry and Wanda? Yeah, the little girl that got kidnapped. He's like, yeah, I thought that would get your attention. And they all reported to the same guy, Terry and, and Al. They both reported to the same guy, Jason Wynn. That gets Sam popping up out of his seat saying, what? What's that son of a bitch uh, have to do with this? And that's where Sam says, well, that you know, that's what I can't, or that's where Twitch rather says, that, well, that's what I can't figure out. You know, uh, Simmons dies in line of duty. Terry eventually marries Wanda Blake. And, you know, what happens now? What we like, what's the next step? What's the missing piece? Uh, and Sam does say, well, if he's a dead guy, that does explain his horrible complexion. And I love this line. And again, this gets into this is really great scripting. And I don't know if it's because Brian Holguin is be, has been added to the scripting on story or McFarland's just getting better at it. But Twitch says, yeah, unfortunately, while that might explain the, uh, you know, his complexion, him being dead, it doesn't explain the get up and move around part. Right? <laughs> like dead bodies don't get up and move around. Um, so, Sam, you can sort of see that his uh, his wheels are turning uh, that upper right panel there, wheels of his brain. Um, I mean, for all his um, dishevelment, I mean, kind of like a Columbo like guy, right? Like he doesn't look like he'd be particularly bright. He's unkempt, but a, a really a sharp guy when it comes to uh, doing his job and figuring out mysteries and that sort of thing. He's like, yeah, Jason Wynn, there's got to be something to do with Wynn because Wynn, um, you know, Simmons ties into Wynn and Wynn ties into Senator Jennings, who ties into Billy Kincaid, remember, because uh, Kincaid kidnapped uh, Jennings' daughter and, and murdered her. Um and and then that ties in with Chief Banks because Chief Banks, um, you know that that sort of was what put Sam and Twitch on the on Chief Banks' radar when Billy Kincaid, when the corpse of Billy Kincaid showed up in their office. Um, and at the end of the day, Sam still wants to sort of figure out or have some vindication uh, about why they got kicked off the force, right? Like prove that they didn't do anything wrong. That sort of thing. Not necessarily because they want to go back, although I sort of think Sam would, um, and probably Twitch as well. But again, they're, in a way, they're just trying to, to clear their names. And so Twitch is uh, speculating as well. He's like, well, you know, Jason Wynn, CIA, Black Ops, could it be that Al Simmons is still working for the CIA, some kind of experimental project? But after he thinks about it for a second, he's like, no, that, that doesn't really fit. There's pieces of the puzzle that are missing. You know, it does seem like Spawn is, has been antagonistic toward Wynn, although they don't know to the extent that we know that he's been antagonistic. But, yeah, it doesn't fit. So Sam gets himself all worked up, and he's like, you know, all this has been verified. You've checked in all the databases. And, and Twitch is like, well, there's a lot of stuff that's that's blacked out, right? A lot of stuff that's redacted, what he calls dark areas that they're not allowed to uh, to get into. So, again, part of it being that, Sam just wants to solve the mystery, but also, again, wanting to clear their name. He's like, well, we're going to get those answers, even if I have to pry them out with my bare hands. And Twitch is like, what do you mean by that? It's like, we're bringing them in. You know, we've got at least enough to hold Spawn, which is interesting. He uses that terminology, right? Dude, you're not a police officer anymore. You don't technically hold anybody. Um, but he's like, yeah, we're going to bring him in. We're going to go to the alley. We're going to find him. So meanwhile, in that alley, the uh, the fight between spawn and the heap continues uh which it, it's it it takes several pages for this fight and really the storytelling here and the kind of the value of these pages is in the art there's some sort of flowery language sort of saying that yeah these are two very powerful beings and they're fighting each other and whatever but you can almost skip the dialogue uh and and the um the exposition boxes on these pages because they don't really – they're not crucial, right? They're not really adding anything. It, it just it, – it's sort of setting the, st uh, the scene, you know, as the heap is battling. It's like a plague wind. There's gusts of wind through the alley and dust and litter and what have you. And Spawn's yelling, yeah, let go of me. These alleys belong to me. And it talks about him punching heap and kicking him and whatever, uh, but his attacks being relatively ineffective. Because, of, you know, he is just punching a pile of garbage. 
how can you, you can, there's nothing to break. There's nothing that you can sort of destroy or, or any real way to stop the heap, if you will. Uh, but the other thing that I want to point out is, you know, it does talk about, you know, dust and debris and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And especially in recent comics, I've been sort of critical of when people use um, like an ink splatter on a page. It makes it feel messy and that sort of thing. Capullo uses that technique here, but it completely works in this context because, you know, as these two beans are battling, there is little bits of debris that are flying off the heap. Um, there's bits of debris that are being kicked up in the air from all the, the garbage and detritus that they're fighting in. So it makes sense in this context as opposed to a lot of other times people put it in just for some texture, and I don't uh, particularly care for it. But I did want to call it out here in case anybody you know, is reading along and they listen to our other content we put out, and they're like, well, Jace always calls out the ink splatter. It doesn't like it, but he, he lets Capullo get away with it here. Again, it, it's here for a purpose. There's not you know, a reason for it. Uh, there's a story reason for it, I guess is how I should say it. So uh, really interesting. Spawn punches, literally punches through uh, the heap a couple of times and realizes, man, I'm not going to be able to defeat this guy. Like, who, who is he? Um, he, he? His whole body goes through the, uh, the heap at one point. So, again, not a lot in, in as far as advancing the story, but I am glad that they dedicated a couple of pages to um, – to this fight because it makes it feel epic and it also gives a sense of just how uh how futile it is for spawn to be fighting against this heap uh which again the name is inspired as well i mean it's literally a heap of garbage there's nothing you can do to stop it so uh as the fight st sort of starts to wind down a little bit as spawn realizes i'm not going to be able to defeat this guy bootsy and cogliostro show up um and they say no we're too late uh, and, and they get a glimpse at, at the heap. They see what he looks like. And Cogliostro is yelling, spawn, get away. You don't understand what that is. And maybe it's the distraction. Maybe it's just time for the heap to make his final move, if you will. But he literally swallows spawn up. Um, and here we do get some some language that uh, it feels in line with the language that we got on, on uh, previous pages. But here it, it's a little more important. Uh, you know, it says an avalanche of pestilence careens uh, down upon the hellspawn, uh, consuming him in its wake. And I, I, again, uh, I give a lot of credit for the scripting. It's it it feels sort of epic in a way, um, and it, it's just very descriptive and it's very it very much describes the action in a way that you sort of get a a sense of not just what's happening. It's sort of the emotional feel, the foreboding, the uh, ominousness of this. So uh, once that wave of garbage that is the heap descends upon Spawn, engulfs him, um, the heap sort of dissipates. And Cogliostro and, uh, and Bootsy are just kind of left there standing amidst this garbage. So they start digging around, you know, is Spawn here? Um, and they don't, they, don't see, they don't see him anywhere. Um, and as they're looking, uh, Cog does say, you know, you need to answer something for me. You're, you're an agent of heaven. Why are you so concerned with the survival of a hellspawn? Like, why do you want to save a hellspawn? And Boots is like, man, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. He's like, yeah, try me. He's like, well, because when spawn dies, the war starts. Armageddon will come, and we're not ready. Malbolgia has harvested too many souls. Heaven's grown careless recently. Uh, if the war begins now, hell's going to win for sure. So we've got to keep Al Simmons alive. We have to make sure that he survives because heaven's simply not ready for that battle yet. So uh, as they're searching for Spawn, um, they they realize that he's not there. And Cog's like, well, what are we going to do now? Bootsy falls to his knees and he starts praying. Uh, and it, it's got um, the word balloon where he's praying has this like little gold border or whatever so you can – so he's really trying to leverage his powers as an angel, uh, saying, you know, heavenly host, we're in dire need, please send us a sign. And Cogliostro kind of makes light of it a little bit, like, don't waste your time. You know, the old bugger doesn't give a crap about anything that happens down here. And Boots just goes off on him. He's like, don't give me that. I, you know, I've, I've tried to be patient, but uh, my patience has limits. I, I've been doing this for years. I've been in this campaign. I've been in this form. Um 
and all you care about is yourself. You're always looking out for number one, and I, I've had it. There's billions of souls at stake, uh, and Cogliostro's like, all right, calm down, calm down. Besides, I think I found your sign. You know, you're praying for a sign. You're praying to God for a sign. I, th I think I found it. And Bootsy says, what is it? And uh, he reaches into the trash and pulls out the sigil of the Hellspawn, right? So these are the the sigils that they wear that once uh, an angel hunter like uh, like Angela, a seraphim, kills a spawn. This is what they collect. And basically, a spawn can't live without that like that's sort of their their talisman their beacon if you will their their sigil right and so if one is separated from a hell spawn it means the hell spawn doesn't exist any longer uh, in heaven or hell or earth or, or wherever right like uh it's been removed it, it no longer exists and then the, the sigil is basically just like a little disc no longer has any power um and yeah, that's what Bootsy says. Like, if a spawn has been eliminated, um, then the sigil will be, you know, separated from it, basically. And uh, Cognacio says, "Yeah, I know. Uh, he's really gone. Like, that's not good." And and as he says that, lightning crashes across the sky. Remember, it's been blazing hot for days upon days upon days. Well, now uh, it cools off. There's lightning and there's torrential rain, and the scene shifts to. The um, Fitzgerald household, where we see Cyan there sitting with her her little pacifier that um, has the shoelace that Spawn used to stitch his face up uh, for a really long time, and she senses that he's gone. Uh, she said, "Oh no, he's gone, mommy." And and Juan is like, "Well, who's gone?" She said, "The sad man. I think something bad happened to him, and something bad did happen to him indeed, because uh, on the next page we see that Spawn is falling in complete darkness." Um, and he's falling for a long time. There's no sensation, you know, there's no sense of wind, um, there's no sound. He's just falling. And he's falling for so long that he starts wondering, you know, what happened to me? Is am I am I truly dead now? Is this um a lifetime? Is is it death time? And he starts to panic a little bit. He cries out, he tries to shout, but no sound, again, because it seems like there's no air to carry the sound. Um and he just keeps falling and falling and falling and falling um and he starts to reflect on his life um and when he does that his thoughts invariably turn to wanda right like is this the end i failed wanda you know i, I made this deal with Malvol malbolgia to come back and try to reconnect with you i wasn't able to um you know he thinks about being a soldier of hell and how uh, because he failed and he's been defeated he'll never see wanda again and he's thinking you know i'm sorry for failing and what have you uh, and as he's falling, uh, a figure shows up out of the darkness, and it's Eddie Beckett. Eddie Beckett, who found the necroplasm and became the heap. And he says, I'm sorry, I've been sent for you. They're waiting. And Spawn's like, wait, who's waiting? What, like, what the hell are you talking about? Who are you? And uh, he explains. He says, I'm Eddie Beckett. Um, I'm not sure what I am anymore, um, but I know that I'm their messenger. Uh, you know, I found this bag of, of green stuff, this weird goo, and um, it, it took over my body and uh, turned me into this monster. And I, I think I'm the leftover of that. Um, you know, it stripped off my flesh and bones and, and Spawn realizes, well, that's my that's my necroplasm. It was part of me. And Eddie says, well, I guess that explains the connection. Maybe it explains, you know, why I'm able to be here. Um, and again, he he apologizes. Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't. You probably didn't deserve any of this. Uh, and again, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm just the messenger. Um, and Spawn's like, give me some answers. Like, what <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, and he says, I gotta go. They're they're calling for you. Good luck. And all of a sudden, this huge voice starts speaking through uh, through Eddie. Right? He's he's a vessel for this. Maybe his consciousness is still there. Maybe not. Um, but this voice says, Hell Spawn, we call upon you in this verdant hour, which is um, a clue about what's going on, right? Uh, and it says, we, we call upon you to face judgment. Spawn, he doesn't want to hear that. You know, we know how Al Simmons feels about being judged. He's like, who are you to judge me? He's like, we don't care about you. We don't care about your petty war. Um, but you're a threat to our well-being, and uh, that's going to be neutralized. We're not going to stand for that. So follow the light. The Emerald Parliament is awaiting. 
Uh, and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. Spawn says, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. It's like, you don't have a choice. This is our domain. It's free from the influence of heaven or hell. You have no power here. Um, and, and this uh, Eddie Beckett figure that's uh, this uh, scion, if you will, this mouthpiece for whatever power um, has taken Spawn to this place. He starts flying toward the light and, and Spawn is, is pulled along behind him to this portal. And when he gets there, uh, Spawn is sucked through, right? And he's like, "What? what is this place? Where am I? Uh, and the voice again says, you're at the heart of the world, uh, the place where everything begins. Welcome home. And um, as the issue ends, we see Spawn reaching out for what appears to be a sigil. So is he alive? Is he dead? Where exactly is he? How can a sigil exist in two places? Is he about to get his powers back? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. All, all of that will be explained next issue. So it's a little bit of a transitional issue. I think where the issue shines is in the the dialogue that's not always necessary uh, as i said like actually during the fight it's it's not that necessary but it still adds a sense of tone a sense of context a, a setting if you will um for that crescendo that happens when the heap engulfs spawn the, the build-up is very very cool um we get some humor in the beginning uh with sam and twitch and some context about what they're up to uh and a little bit of Bootsy and Cog to sort of really hammer home the point of how impactful it is that Spawn is gone. Obviously, they don't know that he still exists, that he's still alive, you know, quote unquote. Uh, he's still conscious. He's still sentient uh, because he's been Spawn's been removed from the playing field. He's not in heaven. He's not in hell. He's not in, anywhere in between. It's almost like he's in another dimension, another reality, what have you so that he no longer exists in the reality of heaven, hell, earth. And that's why his sigil, uh, he's been separated from it, and it appears that he's dead. So, again, all the consequences of that and, and what exactly is happening will be explained next issue. Um, so tune in to, uh, maybe later today, if I release it today, or definitely tomorrow, uh, to check that out. So the uh, the art, I mentioned specifically the um, sort of the ink splatter that we had from Capullo, that I thought was really, really great. Um, I also think the cover with just spawn in darkness falling is very appropriate. Uh, you know, not too often do you get comics where what's happening on the cover is actually happening in the comics. Certainly uh, this was the you know 90s. It happened a little more back then, but this was kind of the time when it started getting away from that and getting more dependence. But what's interesting is it's such a unique composition. You, Capullo gets to use a lot of negative space. Um, but... It, it this is not something where you would think this is a scene in the comic, but it actually is, right? Because it's such a strange thing to have uh, a completely blank, dark space, black space, and have fawn, Spawn falling through it. So it, it almost looks like a pinup in a way, where Spawn's been defeated or he's you know falling to uh, to defeat or something like that. But it actually is uh, a scene in the book. So uh, again, the Capullo art really, really strong. This is really where he's starting to come into his own as an artist, uh, especially, as I said, on these uh, pages of battle, but but even in the pages of Sam and Twitch, you know, using shadow, uh, as you can see there, to give Sam a very ominous look. Um, just the detail, the fine line work, but yeah, certainly in this battle with the chains and the cape and what have you, and just the, the, the massiveness of the heap, and especially when that wave is crashing over heap, in that panel where uh, heap is about to swallow spawn he it looks it truly looks like a wave of garbage right like the heap starts stops looking like um kind of like a humanoid form and really does look like a giant wave of garbage so again uh really great job by capullo you do sort of wonder it just i don't mean to sound cynical here but you do wonder is the quality of the art so much detail in the the fight pages and in the salmon twitch early pages is that because Capullo didn't have to spend as much time on the other pages, you know, the back half to back third of the book, where uh, it's Spawn and uh, this ghost of Eddie Beckett, if you will. Uh, but they're in the, the darkness. They're in the void. They're in the blackness. He didn't have to spend any time doing anything in terms of background for any of that. That's not to say these pages aren't well drawn either. They are. Uh, again, he gets to really go crazy with Spawn's cape. 
So, uh, and I'll point out this panel as well, where you can see Spawn uh, just, again, you don't, you don't see Al Simmons' face, and even when you do, you know, it looks like chewed up bubble gum. So how much context can you get from that? But I'll point out, you can see Spawn, it's almost like a raised eyebrow type expression here. Um, when Eddie Beckett is telling, uh, or the ghost of Eddie Beckett is telling Spawn, uh, you're a threat to our well-being. Uh, you'll not that threat will be tolerated. You'll be neutralized. You know you can see the skepticism. That's not an easy thing to do when this guy's wearing a full face mask, uh, and and half of the uh, his face is in shadow. So great job by uh, Capullo. He's tr uh, truly a master. So uh, anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. We appreciate you joining us as always. Uh, don't forget to be sure you subscribe. Uh, ring the notification bell, leave comments below. Uh, I'm really glad I'm getting back into this. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we won't miss any more days and uh, we'll have several episodes a day uh, eventually to get uh, to get caught up. We'll see how soon I can get that done. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is the audio only. Um, if you're checking us out on YouTube, you know, there are over 2,000 past episodes of the Comic Source podcast, interviews, uh, reviews of other books, convention coverage, all that sort of stuff. So, if you're curious about any of the past um, content, go uh, to wherever you get your podcast, whatever platform or podcast app you use, do search for the comic source and subscribe. Really appreciate the support. Uh, and, yeah, let your friends know as well if they're interested in Spawn or interested in comics. I'm really trying to get to 500 uh, subscribers on YouTube so I can monetize. I've never monetized my uh, content before. I never want there to be a barrier to entry. I never want people to have to pay to uh, discover the joy of comics, but uh, it is no barrier to entry if YouTube has given me a, a few dollars here or there. It helps offset because uh, it's been 12 years I've been doing this now, 12, yeah, over 12 years, um, and I've never made a dime. It only cost me money to host my website, host the content, that sort of thing, so um, it's not an exaggeration to say I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars, so it would be nice to have a little bit of revenue come in to sort of offset that. So I could pay for my new car, which was not cheap, let me tell you. So uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Appreciate you joining us as always. Again, apologies for missing some days, uh, but I'm glad we're getting back on track. So that's going to do it for this episode. Appreciate you guys joining us as always, and we'll talk to you next time.